I I'm not one to fawn. I loved the film. I Thank love a you. good war movie. This was beautifully shot. And I understand that it was a personally inspired story in a sense. Yeah, it was inspired by my grandfather who fought in the First World War and told us stories uh, when I was very little. He didn't tell his, his own children's stories, but for some reason when he got to his 70s, he told his grandchildren. Okay, and so he served on the front for two years or so? He did, he served between 1916 and 1918. He was very young, he was 17 years old. Um, and uh, uh, he told us Stories, there weren't really stories of heroism particularly. They were more stories of luck and chance and how lucky he was to have survived. Even though he won two medals, he didn't, uh, they were never about how brave he was, <laughs> but how lucky. Yes. And what, when did you realize that there was a film in this, in these stories? When did you start thinking about writing the film? And Not till quite recently, actually. Um, you know, I'd always remembered the stories, in particular one about him carrying a message through No Man's Land. And that kept pulling at me you know, after I finished the Bond movies, you know, when I, I had, um, at the beginning of Spectre, I did an eight minute single shot, which also gave me the sense that maybe I could tell a movie like this, a whole movie. Um, and that, plus a little bit of added confidence of having supervised the writing of two Bond movies from nothing, gave me the confidence to sit down and write something myself. So I guess it was quite recent. I'm glad that you alluded to the technical shooting of this film. It is quite spectacular. How complicated was that one shoot look? It was very complicated. Um, a lot of rehearsals. Obviously, if you think about it, we had to construct the set, which is the journey of the movie, to be exactly the right length for the scenes. So it's all very well writing, you know, they walk through a woods, down through an orchard to a farmhouse and up a road and there's a canal. but the orchard had to be exactly the right length for the scene and the scene couldn't be longer than the orchard and the orchard couldn't be longer than the scene. So you start off by walking the scenes out on an empty field, you know, scene after scene after scene and mar marking out on those, in those landscapes exactly where you're going to build. And then you have to build things that look like they've always been there. And you have quite a cast, you know, from Benedict, Richard Madden, yeah. but the two young men um, who are the stars, how mm. difficult was it casting George and, and Dean? Well, I saw pretty much every young actor in England, you know, uh, and in the UK, and they just came in, you know, that thing you hope for where you get someone who is the role as you imagined it and a little bit more. You know, George is quite old fashioned, a little bit older, a little bit more experienced, um, quite internal, Schofield, the character he plays, and Blake, who is played by Dean Charles Chapman, a little bit chattier, a little bit um, warmer, perhaps a bit more, um, a little less experienced, uh, and younger too, more vulnerable. They're, they're fantastic. And everyone loves Andrew Scott and Richard Madsen, um, Richard Madden, sorry. And obviously you have some experience with Bond. There's some buzz about Richard maybe being named as the next Bond. I have to ask the question. Any thoughts? <laughs> no, I've just about as much idea as you, I'm afraid. I literally, you know, I've been spent the last two years on this movie and the Bond years uh, seem quite a long time away, uh, you know, a long time ago now, five years I spent doing two movies. Um, he's a wonderful actor. So he could, you could see him in that role, but? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, but I could see lots of other actors too. So it's, it's, uh, it's a tough one, that. It's award season, Monday, Golden Globes. Do you put a lot of hope and, and desire in getting nominated? What would it mean for your film to be nominated? Well, it'd be great because, you know, you want your movie to be seen in cinemas. I mean, it hasn't come out yet. You know, I, I, the reason I'm doing this and we, you know, we're out there uh, pushing it is because we want this movie to be seen in cinemas. You know, it's a, and it's a hard, it's a hard push sometimes, you know, with two young actors and not movie stars, not obvious movie stars. Um, so obviously being in the awards of discussion uh, is, is great for the movie. Yeah, 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 always. Um, okay, so obviously my favorite war film personally is The Iron Cross with James Coburn. Do you know this film? I do. I love it. <laughs> but this film, 1917, has been con compared with Saving Private Ryan. How, what do you think about that? Uh, well, first of all, it's incredibly flattering because, you know, it's a movie that I loved. Um, but it's quite a different film in a way. I mean, Ryan is a, well, at least the first half an hour of it is a pure combat film. You know, it really is a visceral experience, and and it uh, there's a great deal of bloodshed. 
I mean, quite rightly so, given what it's depicting. Um, and it's very, very brilliantly edited. This, on the other hand, is not a combat film, really. Um, uh, it's, it's, and there's not very much bloodshed. Uh, it's every bit, I hope, is um, exciting, but in different ways. Uh, and of course, it can't be brilliantly edited because there are no edits in it. <laughs> so it ryth its rhythms are quite different. Um, so I, I, I think it's its own thing. This movie, you know, it, it's not. We, we looked at other movies to be inspired by, and um, we couldn't find many because there aren't many that feel and look like this. Well, what, what, what were some of the inspiring, inspirational films for this? Well, we, like I say, we couldn't really find any. Uh, I mean, you know, you're always inspired by great movies, so there are great war movies. You mentioned one of them, Iron Cross. Um, but you know, about the First World War, the obvious one would be Paths of Glory, Grand Illusion, another great one. But then, you know, you're influenced by things like Apocalypse Now, the obvious ones, and Ryan and Dunkirk. You know, these are these are, you know, great movies about about war, and all of them are also about the human experience, not just about, you know, that particular conflict, and none of them are history lessons, you know what I mean? None of them feel like um, that the, the movies are trying to be good for you or teach you a lesson. They're all experiences, and, um, and they all have their own distinctive flavor. So I hope that's what we made. And the score, the musical score, it's phenomenal. It's beautiful. I'm glad you say that, because I agree with you. I think it's a, a wonderful score by Tom Newman. I think it's one of his finest you know, moments, and uh, it's not an easy movie to score because it's so present tense, you know, and it's very linear. There's no, you know, there's, you're locked into this one journey with these two characters. And, um, you know, you, you can't comment on it, really, and, and music so often is commenting or distancing the audience in some way from, from the, uh, the action. Here, it, it's the opposite. Thank you for watching. If you want more extra, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll never miss a video.